Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is. Michael Savage. Welcome to the Hotel California. Such a lovely place. Michael such a Savage, place. the owner of Hotel California on the radio sphere. And of course, I set off a controversy yesterday, as you well know, it's nothing new to my show. I mean, when you're the leader of the pack in many ways and your ideas are the first out of the box, naturally people attack you. All I said was Trump made a mistake by picking Palin. And, oh, my God, the world came crashing down. Well, first of all, let's go back to what I actually said. I said Trump needs Palin like a hole in the head. Why did I say that? I said it because Trump represents something new in American politics. He represents an independent, not tied to the Republican Party, not tied to the Democrat Party, something new, offering us new hope, new blood, and he reaches out to something old. An old figure in a new campaign does not work for me. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. That's what I said yesterday. Now, what happened was is that we saw that, you know, we've heard a hundred times that there are low-information voters on the left. Well, let me tell you something. There's an awful lot of them on the right as well. They are as mindless as the left in what they think people say and what they think people should say. And I want to discuss that today. I want to discuss the issue that I'm raising, which is what is a conservative? That's one of the most important questions we are ever going to cover on the Savage Nation. And I'm going to cover it again today on this show because many of you think you know what a conservative is. And i got to tell you something. You don't. Stop talking to me about Edwin Burke and William F. Buckley Jr. They're dead and buried. They were conservatives in their time. The world has changed. The definition of the, what a conservative is has changed. The population has changed. The world has changed. With the uh, emergence of ISIS, you better rethink what your terms are. Liberals understand that they're not as liberal as they once were, given the threat from the Islamo-fascist savages. They give savages a bad name, by the way. But anyway, let's get to the the issue at hand. What is a conservative? What do they believe in? Is there a true, is there a litmus test for conservatism? I don't know what it is. And yet there are those who think they know what it is. And only their definition of conservatism counts. Can you be a conservative and not hold uh, a belief system to every one of the items on the litmus test? And let's not go into the Trump Cruz, who was a more conservative guy. Because I will show you. That Cruz has as many holes in his conservative credentials as does Donald. That's something you got to understand. But let's talk about what a conservative is and what I said when he said, I said he needed Palin like a hole in the head. Let me re again reestate what I'm saying, restate what I'm saying to you. Trump represents something new in the American political system. Palin, he dr drug up from the past. She endorsed, uh, what's his name? The Warhawk last time. That guy from Arizona with the the war hero, allegedly. McCain, McCain, McCain. She, she endorsed him. That was a very good, smart move. But it's not about Palin. I don't really have an opinion on Palin, per se. She actually makes my flesh crawl along the lines of Duck Dynasty. It's just not my type of people. I'm sorry. Maybe it's my New York values. Maybe it's that I'm a city slicker. I don't really know. I'm nothing against country people. I In fact... I never met country people I didn't like, except those in deliverance. But the fact of the matter is, that's not about country city. It's not, not about town and gown. She's just not my type in terms of what I'm looking for in a politician. When I play for you what she said last night on the stump for Trump, your flesh will crawl. So let's start it right now and stop it right after she says that thing about ISIS. Go ahead, play it again, Sam. Are you ready to make America great again? <laughs> Only one candidate's record of success proves he is the master of the art of the deal. He is beholden to no one but we, the people. How refreshing. He is perfectly positioned 
to let you make America great again. You ready for a commander in chief who will let our warriors do their job and go kick ISIS ass? Oh, 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 junior high school cheerleader. Sorry, stop the music. Again, she may be a fine person in some ways, and I couldn't say that, but the very same day this happened, and we're not responsible for our children, the Palin son was arrested for alleged uh, domestic abuse and drunk driving. You talk about timing. That was pretty bad timing. I mean, I wasn't wrong. It was right after I went off the air. Bingo. So the, my point is, is that Cruz's minions are community organizers on the right. Write that one down. We heard that Obama's a community organizer. But the minions of Cruz who are attacking me on the blogs are no different than the community organizers that work for Obama. So let's get into what is a conservative. How do you define it? I'll let you join the conversation because I will define it for, for myself. When I began in radio, 1994, I was asked to define what I stand for. They said, what do you mean conservative? Mm, people didn't really understand it that well. And I didn't quote William F. Buckley Jr. or Edmund Burke. I didn't have to go to a textbook to tell you what I believed in. Unlike some who need to go to books to find out what they believe in. Okay? I write the books. I don't need to read your book. What is a conservative? I defined it as borders, language, and culture. And let me tell you something. Tens of millions of libertarians agree with me. They say that they are libertarians who believe in borders, language, and culture, but they just don't want anyone telling them how to live. And i got to tell you something about that. I remember when I first heard the word conservative floated around in a big way in this country. That was in the era of Nixon. I was in my 30s, I believe. When I heard people saying, I'm a conservative, I hated them. Why? Because I saw them as rigid, moronic people who wanted to bully me and tell me how to live. And by the way, whether you like it or not, that is how most of this country sees conservatives, as bullies who want to tell them how to live, bullies who use crosses in their face to tell them who to sleep with, who not to sleep with, Tell them that they're morally superior to them. Tell them what to do and what not to do with their lives. And that's how people view conservatives to this day. And say, well, it's not true. Well, maybe it's true or not true. That's how it's perceived. That's how conservatives are still seen. And it's drilled into people's brains, by the way. Look at how conservatives are portrayed by the uh, liberals in movies and on TV. Conservatives are seen as not cool, not good looking. They're seen as scowling malcontents who frown on you and try to tell you the way things should be. And, of course, the media paints conservatives the same way. You've seen ads where they're portrayed as someone who literally wants to kill your relatives. Remember the ad where they pushed Grandma in a wheelchair over a cliff? Or the guy who basically said Romney was responsible for his wife dying? This, unfortunately, is what people think when they hear the word conservative. This is the picture that they have. But the minions who are the community organizers on the right will tell you Trump is not a conservative. So tell me, what is a conservative? Who gave them the mantle and the crown to wear that title? Who gave anyone the right to say, only I am a conservative, and anyone who doesn't follow my way is not a true conservative? Do they even know what that means? Now, that's why Trump is going to win, because Trump is not seen as that kind of bully. Trump is not seen as that kind of conservative. He may be arrogant, I don't think he's going to tell you how to live your life. I don't think he's going to hit you with a cross over the head. I don't think he's going to thump a Bible on your head. And as much respect as I have for the Bible, and I read it on this show, and I refer to it when I need to, I don't think he's going to thump it on your head. Trump will not thump the Bible. Now, I've defined conservatism as borders, language, and culture. Way back in 1994, when I began in radio uh, on a little station in San Francisco called KSFO, the program director came up to me because he was a little leery, even though he knew it was a conservative station, and I was a firebrand then. And he said, well, what, what do you define yourself as? How do you define a conservative? I said, well, I believe in borders, language, and culture. And I have a very strict firewall between that and racism, between that and telling people how to live their lives. Borders, language, and culture. I do not know of a better definition for today of what a conservative is than borders, language, and culture. Now you'll say I'm omitting this or I'm omitting that, that I'm omitting the Constitution 
And I'm admitting this and I'm admitting that. I don't have to say the word Constitution and bang, bang it over your head like a, like a Bible, do I? Do I have to hold up the Constitution and smash you with it to show you that I'm a true believer? Is that what you're, you're expecting now? Borders, language, and culture to me defines it all. Now, of course, there are very, there are, unfortunately, there are millions of low information voters. You've heard the phrase over and over and over again, but you don't know where it came from. Where did the words, the phrase, low information voters come from? Unfortunately, I wasn't given the individual's name, but I have it for you here. Low information voters, also known as LIVs, or misinformation voters, are people who may vote, but who are generally poorly informed about politics. And many of you think it applies only to liberals, and unfortunately applies to too many liberals, but it also applies to too many people on the other side. Where did the phrase low information voter come from? You don't know the answer to that, do you? Well, American pollster and political scientist Samuel Popkin coined the term low information in 1991. And then he used the phrase low information signaling in his book, The Reasoning Voter, Communication and Persuasion in Presidential Campaigns. Low information signaling referred to cues or heuristics, well, to cues used by voters in lieu of substantial information to determine who to vote for. Examples include voters liking Bill Clinton for eating at McDonald's and perceiving John Kerry and Barack Obama as elitist for windsurfing and golfing, respectively. So you have to understand that the phrase low information voter can apply across the aisle. We know it applies to most knee jerk liberals. That's a given. Look at how Obama gets elected when he stands for so many things that are antithetical to America, American values, and even America's survival. It's people who love him anyway are low-information voters. But unfortunately, folks, many of you are low-information voters, and you don't even know it. You sit there, you scream, you write things on blogs against anyone who doesn't say the right words. What does that make you, an intellectual? You are one of the minions that the community organizers on the right are now using to tell you that Trump is not a conservative, or Michael Savage is not a conservative, or this one's not a conservative, or that one's not a conservative. It's like living in communist times when I hear that. Whenever I hear people pointing fingers and say, you're not a real conservative, he's not a real conservative, only I know what a real conservative is, that's exactly the rhetoric that was used by communist organizers in the Soviet Union. They also wanted a purity test. They also drum people out of the communist movement who were not pure enough for them. Do you know that? Do you know that this didactic mentality comes directly from Lenin? You don't know any of this. Phone number. What is a conservative? What did I say when I meant, what did I mean when I say Trump needs pain like a hole in the head? Here's my phone number. You don't need it. We're sold out. Back in a minute. Robert. Oh! Well, we're playing a little patriotic music. We can all say, well, that's conservative music, I guess. But what happens if I like uh, salsa music as well? What happens if I like jazz music? Does that suddenly I'm not 100% conservative? I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to like jazz. I can't like uh, salsa music. I'm not allowed. To, I'm not, I can't like Mick Jagger. Okay, watch out where you go with this. We're defining what a conservative is. Be, be careful where you go with this one. Taught on KSFO. What is a conservative? Go ahead, please. Yeah, Dr. Savage, I, I've been most of my life, actually all of my life, an out-of-the-box conservative. What I mean is, is I don't follow somebody's mantra. And I, and I think borders, language, and culture, I absolutely agree with. But the root of that is truth. And that's what conservative is. I have been seek, I, my whole life I have, I have been consistent in trying to seek the truth in everything. I, I have a scientific background um, in computer science. And it's, it's innate with me, but like you say about the low information or misinformation voters, they're absolute drones. And, and no, no matter how much I can show them... But Todd, hold on, hold on. We know that the low information voter, as defined by Samuel Popkin in 1991, by the way, does not apply only to liberals. You do know that there are plenty of them on the right, don't you? Absolutely. I, I have uh, 